Former special counsel Robert Mueller may soon finally testify before the Senate Judiciary Committee after he wrote a blistering op-ed in The Washington Post blasting President Trump's decision to commute the prison sentence for longtime friend and former campaign aide Roger Stone. The head of the Senate Judiciary Committee, Lindsey Graham, says he plans to call on Mueller to testify before the Senate panel after shooting down a request last year by Senate Democrats for Mueller to testify. This is all happening after President Trump announced his very controversial decision to commute Stone's sentence late Friday. Stone, of course, was set to begin a 40 month prison term for lying to Congress during its investigation of Russian interference in the 2016 election. I will tell you this. People are extremely happy because in this country they want justice and Roger Stone was not treated properly. So I'm very happy with what I did. He I commuted a sentence. He's very happy about it. But is anyone else joining us now? Joyce Vance, former U.S. attorney and professor at the University of Alabama School of Law and Steve Schmidt, former Republican strategist. Steve. A very, very small group of Republicans blasted the president's decision. Mitt Romney, Pat Toomey. Where's everybody else? Well, they're hiding. They're silent. They're afraid. They're terrified of being tweeted at. They are terrified of this president giving them a nickname. And so once again, we see this feckless, cowardly Republican majority in the Senate, Republican minority in the House, who won't stand up for the rule of law, won't stand up for the checks and balances, won't stand up for decency. The Secretary of Education can go on a television show and say that the loss of 0.2 percent of America's school children with about 15,000 American kids is acceptable casualty numbers. What we see in this administration is the stench, the rot, Um, And Roger Stone is a nefarious character. He deserves to be in prison. He is a convicted felon. Uh, But, you know, at this point in the administration, we shouldn't be surprised at anything that Trump does. And we shouldn't be surprised at the total silence and complicity of his Republican enablers. The expectations are zero because that's what they proved to do for these last years. But see, but Steve, why are Republican voters down with this? Um, I'm not a psychologist, Stephanie. I, I can't I can't explain it. But in this in this hour of testing, when every American idea and ideal has been assaulted by this administration, when we've seen rampant corruption, we have an entire political class in this country that is scared to stand up and to do their duty to preserve and protect and steward the Constitution of the United States to make the country Uh, a a better place to hand it off more, uh, a stronger country to our kids. Um, I, 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 you know, I'm at a loss for it for for years, but it's it's despicable. It's it's cowardly. When we look at the coronavirus response across the country, we see states, big states, mega states that could be nations unto themselves, Florida and Texas, led by abject fools that are to be responsible for killing a lot of their citizens with the idiocy of of the policies. It's just it's a terrible time in the country with regard to our leader leaders. We have a we have a leadership crisis. We have a courage crisis in the country. And it's uh, it's too bad. And we see the damage that it's all done. Joyce, on Twitter, you really dissected President Trump's letter where he announced the commutation. What stood out to you the most? So I think the letter just piles awful on top of the commutation, which is bad enough, because Trump doubles down on why he commuted Roger Stone's sentence. And here's what sets this commutation apart from any other time a president of the United States has commuted a sentence for someone. It's that the president was limiting his own exposure, whether to criminal investigation or congressional oversight, by ensuring that Roger Stone would never testify about him. With this commutation, Stone will never spend a night in prison. There is no risk that he will cooperate with federal officials and tell them what he knows about Trump to save himself from going to prison. So in in announcing this pardon, in decrying it as part of the Russia hoax, which we all know was not a hoax, 
Bob Mueller had two blockbuster indictments that displayed for everyone to see Russia's efforts to interfere in our election. Trump is continuing this litany that says that he is always the one who is done wrong by the criminal justice system. As the leader of that system, he should have ensured that Roger Stone went to prison. Trump yet again puts his own interests in front of those of the American people. And as Steve points out, that's no longer shocking. In fact, it's become normal. We would all be surprised if Trump put the country first. Okay, then because of that, Steve, as foul as this is, could one actually look at this as a smart move by President Trump? Because since we've come to accept that this is who he is, is he really going to lose one single voter, one single supporter over commuting Roger Stone's sentence? Or would he be of risk of exposing a lot more if Roger Stone actually went to prison and turned on him? Well, he loses voters every day just on the basis of the coronavirus death rate in the in the country. I don't know the answer to the question. I do know that his poll numbers are collapsing. I know they announced a multi-million dollar television advertising campaign that won't take place in the state of Michigan because that state is already lost to him. You look at the Senate races all across the country. Trumpism is in a lot of trouble as we head into an election in 100 and 113 days. But understand this, when we talk about Roger Stone, when we talk about all the degradations to our systems, his desecrations of his office, is that we live in a country where the world's leading infectious disease specialist, Dr. Anthony Fauci, has been silenced by the White House. And in fact, the White House is sending opposition research like he's an opponent, like he's a political opponent to news organizations to discredit him in the middle of the pandemic. When you process that, when you when you take it in, when you when you really just sit back and you think about that, the insanity that has been unleashed in this country over the last year by by this president, by the foolishness that we see. And it doesn't matter whether it's coronavirus response, whether it's the assault on the rule of law, whether it is his betrayal of our men and women in harm's way in Afghanistan who have Russian bounties on their heads. He has refused to defend the country from hostile foreign powers. He has refused to do his duty. He has eviscerated the norms of the American presidency in a most tragic way. And what he has exposed is the rot and corruption of one of our two political parties in this country that have decided to join a cult of personality as opposed to being United States senators and members of Congress and standing up for their constituents and our system of government, the 244-year-old American experiment. It is a tragic hour in our land for sure. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.